All right, today we're gonna get back to work on the gold truck here, or silver, pewter truck. Every time I go to do a burnout, the back end starts wheel hopping like crazy until I can just power through it. So today we're gonna do a quick fix on that. By now I'm sure most of you guys have seen the new truck here. If you're not familiar with it, it's an 88 GMC Sierra. It has a 350 Turbo 400. And if you look down here, you can see these old school universal Lakewood traction bars. Now on this thing, because it's a stock 350, less than 300 horsepower, those are not doing anything on this. So I'm gonna wrap them off this. I'm gonna throw them on that and see if they at least help with the wheel hop issue. Now these ones are universal, so they're a little shorter than you'd want for something like this. So I don't know if they're actually gonna work or if they're just gonna end up bending my springs. Because what you'd really want is that, uh, is that rubber pad there. You'd really want that to end up making contact with the eye of the spring right there. I'll explain more at the whiteboard. So here's a basic leaf spring setup. You can see the leaf spring and shackle here. There's the axle housing and here's the outside of the tire. Now here's how wheel hop happens. As you hit the gas to either do a burnout or to launch the car, the grip of the tire actually overpowers the leverage of the leaf spring. So as the tire starts to rotate to move the vehicle forward like that, the grip that it actually has on the ground overpowers the leaf spring, which makes the leaf spring want to bow up like that. And that causes the suspension to physically unload because that leaf spring can only warp so much so it goes in the path of least resistance, which is the tire, which is that tire going up. And that's where you get the term wheel hop because as the suspension unloads, the tire jumps up to take some of that stress away and then it comes shooting back down, gets grip again, and the whole cycle starts over again. And that's when you start to see vehicles like violently shaking when they're doing a burnout with low tire speeds. It is possible to just power through it, but I don't advise it. You're still gonna put a lot of stress on things. The thing to do is get some sort of traction bar. And in this case, a very simple uh, piece of steel that comes out here like this. And what that does is it bolts right around the axle, or it's supposed to. Now these are also called slapper bars, and I'll explain why. As you hit the gas and the tire gets grip and it wants to twist the spring like I showed you a minute ago, this front here comes up and it physically makes contact or slaps the eye of the spring there so that it has mechanical leverage over the spring and it physically cannot twist. Now this is a super old school design. It came out around the 60s. I think it was Don Garlitz, I can't remember, that came up with it. Um, basically all it does is fight wheel hop. I don't think if at all it helps with traction. Uh, for something like that you'd want Caltrax or Assassin traction bars, things like that. Uh, but this was just a quick gloss over on how these traction bars work. Alright, let's start ripping that other side off now. All right, we got them all cleaned up a bit the wrong way using brake cleaner. Uh, you can see it faded the yellow a little bit, but that's really not the important thing here. The important thing is stopping wheel hop. So we're just gonna pull the truck in now. I'll get it jacked up and we can start figuring out how we wanna mount them because these are a little short. Ideally, they'd be extended out, but I'm, I don't know, we'll see.
important to note that when you're doing something like this, you wanna have all the weight on the suspension so that the truck or car, whatever you're doing, is as close to ride height as possible. That's why I've got it jacked up and I'm not using the hoist. Now the next order of business is how I actually want to mount these. Now like I said earlier, you want that rubber stopper to be on the eye of the spring because if you have it back here as the axle wraps, this part moves up too, so it's not really gonna be doing anything. So I almost think I might have to mount them ahead of the axle, which isn't right. Ideally you want it mounted in front and behind the axle so that it's grabbing right in that area. It's not gonna be able to get as much leverage as it needs, but for the sake of just getting them on right now, that started helping hold it up. Get the nut and lock washer over here. My camera died, but full disclosure, you guys didn't really miss much. We got the traction bars bolted on. You can see it's about a half inch from the eye of the spring. Like I said, these ones are mounted in front of the axle because they're so short, but in theory it should still work. But there's only one way to find that out. Scientific burnouts. get rid of the wheel hop that was way better obviously I need a new converter because getting that wheel speed up initially sucked um, I know Caltrax are definitely the way to go but considering these are free or if you go out and buy them outright they're like 50 bucks it's really not a bad way to go if you're just wanting to get rid of wheel hop I don't know how well they would actually help with traction and helping you hook up on launching but for wheel hop traction bars are awesome Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'll see you next time.